I'm flabbergasted. Uh, all right. Well, we still suck and can't draw a land. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are kicking off your Monday in a positive light today and hopefully we can share in that make it a little better for you because we have a very cool very awesome deck list that is put together by someone who I did not know about until very recently over the weekend I was just kind of searching through some deck lists and things like that and happened upon Symphonier Gaming which if you don't know he is a phenomenal not only deck builder but player uh, and pushes through on that mythic ranking and things like that. And so it was really enjoyable. I got to watch some of his videos. Go subscribe to him. I will link him down below because he did create this list. And my goodness, is he just an interesting, very, very intelligent individual. Uh, absolutely phenomenal to watch. So let's talk about the deck that, he, again, he put together uh, that I thought we would test out here today. And I'm I'm testing it out one for one. He did mention, uh, I, I watched the video on this deck in particular. He mentioned that as he goes through, he still swaps out cards here and there, in particular with some of the draw package and removal package. But we'll talk about all that and where he landed for now. Uh, and then again, I encourage you guys to take this, go subscribe to him, go hang out with him, but take this, see what you can do with it as well. It is kind of a Boros Super Friends list. And by that, I mean it's Super Friends light because there's really only two Planeswalkers. However, we do have the Wandering Emperor and we do have Zareel. Now, both of these are phenomenal, especially in this deck. And uh, as as uh, Symphonier points out, it's very important to deal with a lot of these aggro lists, get around some of the control lists, and obviously Planeswalkers are a great way to do that. So very interesting that he includes these two. I'm very curious to see how this kind of goes. Uh, a lot of the rest of the deck, as you'll notice, is kind of sectioned out in pieces. So we have got, uh, again, to, to kind of deal with the, the things that are very, or, or get around some of the things that are very difficult to deal with. We've got a lot of sagas. So we've got the restoration uh, as well as fable of uh, the, the mirror breaker and uh, Kamano faces Kakazam. I don't know. However you say that. Uh, all of these are very difficult for the opponent to deal with because they are just enchantments. So you got to have that enchantment hate, which arguably isn't that uncommon right now. However, this does provide you with a little bit of that like long-term value that we're looking for here. Uh, we do have a few removal pieces, of course. We've got Light of the Night, Portable Hole, uh, March of Otherworldly Light, which does a great job of exiling things. Uh, we've got that Thundering Rebuke. We've even got a Shatter Skull Smashing, a Circle of Confinement as a one of. All of those are there to kind of deal with whatever we see uh, on the battlefield. And if we need to deal with something, we've got those options. Uh, we do have Guardian of Faith for a little bit of our own protection. Uh, now, again, this works super well with the sagas. He points that out in his video because it really uh, is difficult when like in the early or mid game where you want to play a creature out, but still leave up that Guardian. Uh, it gets a little challenging because you can't do that with only a few mana. And so this works really well to protect what comes down after the saga hits that third counter, uh, which is really awesome. Uh, we do have a nice little draw package in here. So we've got the Reckoner uh, Bank Buster, which gives some long-term draw, as well as just a one of Spirited Companion. Not an amazing card by any means, but it does come into play uh, in particular with... Which one was it? Um... There's one card in here that allows us to kind of play this out that's really, really nice. We also have that Luminarch Aspirant, which is just a nice way to kind of gain some value over the long term. If it sticks around, it's going to be very difficult to deal with. Uh, if it doesn't, that's okay, but it is very powerful. Uh, and then finally, at the top end, we do have the Amiria's Call. Going to give it anything uh, indestructible that's a non-angel. And then, of course, hopefully we can get him for some big attacks. So this is going to be an interesting one, guys. Again, I want to encourage you, please go check him out. He, uh, I was blown away by the the quality of gameplay as well as the decks that he was putting together just phenomenal so i encourage you to go check him out bit of a smaller channel but very much worth the subscription uh and guys let's jump into some games let's see how we can do with this one all right guys and here we are for game number one now this is an interesting hand we have no red mana however we actually do have some draw here i'm gonna try it i'm not super sold on this of course but uh i do kind of want to see if we can get this to work so 
let's try that spirited companion is kind of a nice addition because again that card draw is nice with the luminar aspirant you get a little bit of a, a an option in terms of where you place those counters we'll see can we get a red source no we've got two fables back to back uh thankfully again we've got the luminar aspirant so we've got plays it's not like we're just dead in the water but uh certainly not ideal either Let's go ahead, let's throw that counter on the companion. We can get an attack in this turn, uh, which I think is definitely the right way to go. And then at some point we can actually just exile this generous visitor um, with the, the march, which is quite nice. We do need some lands here. We're a little behind there. Uh, sure, for each artifact and enchantment you control. Good. That's very powerful. Again, we're probably just gonna exile this thing and get in for an attack this upcoming turn. Um, that just seems like the best, most efficient play. Okay, it's a red source. I will take it. Um, I think we actually take the three. So we can get this going. But first, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Kills one damage to them. Not a hugely powerful thing, but it is quite nice. And then let's go ahead. Um, we don't need to exile anything here. Let's go ahead and pay. Get that off the field. We'll get another counter. I think we'll... Um, I think we'll actually keep them going on the Spirited Companion. This is a deck that is going to try and go big with things like the Kami with the Generous Visitor. And so if we can continue to um, hopefully deal with, you know, just outpowering the opponent, that might be a very beneficial thing to do. There's that Hollowed Haunting, a very good card, but again, something we can actually deal with because we have that March. Uh, now the question becomes, uh, how do we want to go about doing this? We could wait a turn get that other aspirant down and just hope to outpower um which i do kind of like i'm not sold that this is the right play but this is the most damage output for sure uh and then we can actually nah we can't quite do that okay i was gonna say it'd be really cool if we could do that but we can't uh let's go ahead and do this again i'm i'm really pushing them onto that spirited companion i think that that's just the safest bet um, and then next turn, we can either exile the portrait or uh, any follow-up creature that comes down here. And theoretically, we might have a win. We'll, we'll see. Um, they definitely have a, a powerful board with that Hollowed Haunting and this portrait because this is going to get out of hand very quickly while this is just going to be spitting out things for everything they play. So you have to be a little careful here. Wow, okay. One of my all-time favorite cards. Country Fried and I like to gush over this card. Absolutely fantastic. I love that. Um, so we can actually just exile this. I guess we'll, I mean, can we exile this? No. Okay. We'll, we'll pass. We'll wait. Curious to see how this goes. All right. So we'll exile this at the upcoming turn. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. So this comes into play transform, which is great. Um, let's do this we'll submit zero we can go ahead and exile this now which i will do just to get something off the field here and then i'm gonna throw a counter here and i'm gonna throw a counter we need to start spreading them out so let's do this and we'll get in for the attack here they obviously have to block the five five and then this is going to do quite a bit of damage to him so Fingers crossed we've got this. Um, I mean, they get more count or more creatures here, but this uh, is a little scary. Let's see. Okay. That's actually fine. Um, that's good, but it's not gonna it's not gonna kill us. They can gain some life here as well, which is fine. Um, they're just gonna choose to draw a card, which I think makes sense. They could potentially get rid of something here. They've got the fall, which is very good, but again, should be able to deal with it. Wow, double aspirant. We just have all the Luminar aspirants. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep playing them out. <laughs> all right, so let's put a counter here. Put a counter here. Put a counter here. And I guess we'll put another one here just to continuously spread things out. Uh, and I think we just attack in. And this is the win, I believe. They can block however they want and we still get to deal eight damage to them here. Perfect. Guys, we did it. That was our first win. Again, a phenomenal draw. Just getting so many Luminar Casperins was very difficult for them to deal with, apparently. That was great. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys. Here we are for game number two. 
Uh, and this is an interesting hand, but I definitely think it's keepable. We've got the Reckoner that we can get out on turn two, and we do have some interaction with, of course, our big Planeswalkers coming down later. So we'll see. I, I have high hopes. Let's go ahead and lead on that Den of the Bugbear. Uh, we can then put that pathway land down and have both of these available to us this upcoming turn. That's actually fantastic. That guarantees our next land, which is certainly ideal. Uh, the question is, do we want to actually exile this just to get it out of there? Or do we just go ahead and progress with the bank buster? I'm going to go bank buster. Um, while it is annoying that they probably can just either sacrifice this or get in some damage with it and then get rid of it, uh, it's not the end of the world for us. And so I'd rather progress our own game plan, I think, at this point, and uh, we'll see how things go from there. Uh, yeah, so I think we just do this. Uh, it'd be great if we had a, a two-drop thing to, to throw in the graveyard here, but we don't. We do get the land, which we can throw back, but it comes into play tapped uh, off of this, so just something to keep in mind. We don't have to discard a card, of course, but it is actually just good value if we can. It's a free card, essentially. Um, so it would be something I'd like to do, but probably not going to be able to here. They go ahead and get that search, which is perfectly fine. I think the uh, the play is to wait and play the Wandering Emperor. Um, I think that's probably just going to be the best play. Now, we could actually discard one of these lands and then play the other one. That doesn't sound terrible, but I kind of want to hold on to this, so I think I will. Um, I think we just do this and pass. Uh, so what we're able to do here is play that Wandering Emperor at flash speed so we can do it anytime we'd like. Uh, and that just allows us a little bit of, um, you know, kind of surprise element here that we might be able to get something down and then play the Zareal as well. Uh, an enchantment we control gets exiled. Um, annoying? Do we feel it's, it's the end of the world? I mean, we don't really have an option, so that's fine. Um, debt to Kami. Interesting. So this is a pretty aggressive play because we actually get to choose what it is. So this is an interesting choice of card to uh, to throw out there. I do kind of like it, but it's just, I don't know, a little suspect. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this out now. Um, and then I think we will go ahead and activate her ability at some point here. I guess we should have waited, but I think this will be fine. Uh, we can just exile the creature. Kind of like that. Let's get that Eye Witch out of there. If they've got the uh, the Deadly Dispute, they're going to obviously play it here, which is fine. But we're forcing the issue. <clears throat> and I think I like that better. Just to remove that as a potential threat for them. Now they've got the Necrotic Fumes, which is a, a little bit frustrating, but not the end of the world. Uh, we've got the March that can deal with if they've got like a Shambling Ghast or something here. Um, and they do have to discard a guard as well, which is good. All right. Um... Well, I mean, I think the play is pretty clear. I think we just throw this out. Um, I think we go ahead and throw this out. And then I think we're just going to throw the 1-1 one -one counter on here. I am going to go ahead and play this land here. We do want to have access to our lands. We do have the Bank Buster on the field as a mana sink. We also have the March. And so I do think leaning towards having the mana is better than the long-term uh, longevity there. Interesting. Okay. Um, it's actually kind of funny because we can just exile this. <laughs> um, and I 100% will. So let's just do this. We're going to submit zero. Auto pay. I'm happy to pay our entire mana base to get rid of that. Uh, crucially, that doesn't hit the, the die trigger, which is really useful as well. So let's do this. Um, the crew cost three we can do this um i think we will i wish we could have well yeah i wish we could have crewed before but we can't let's go ahead and do this though and now we get in with a vigilance creature and a four four so we're actually going to start picking away at their life total a good bit here uh and again we've got two planeswalkers with backup planeswalkers in hand um, that Wandering Emperor is really clutch because you can just kind of discard stuff and get stuff back. Okay, they're going to kill the Planeswalkers and they get an Eye Witch back. That's fine. So, how do we want to do this? Uh, hmm. 
so we can just kill it i'll turn it i don't love that though it's a little unexciting um i think we go this route we'll plus up um and i think we'll just attack with these two for now we can activate the bank buster if we'd like uh we could have gotten rid of this but i think i'd rather get the uh the count or the, the draw aspects going crucially we need to keep them off of creatures for as long as they've got that necrotic themes in hand so like seeing how they reacted to that was pretty crucial i'm gonna exile a permanent i think we'll go ahead and do this just to get a card if it's a land great we can play it perfectly fine by me and then we just pass turn here so they're probably going to introduction to annihilation on the zareal if i had to assume but we'll see interesting okay uh so we can just kill this right <laughs> um it feels x plus one instead of that target is eight so if we pay zero this still does one and kills it. <laughs> cool. Uh, we did it. I um, think we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll plus up. Uh, that does give haste to everything if we would like to. Um, let's activate this. This just forces them to double block if they want. Yeah. Um, let's let's crew with one of these actually. Alright. Get the attack in. Um, and again, we're just slowly stacking up things that they're gonna have to deal with here, which is important. Um I wish we had one more mana available so we could leave up that guardian, but it's fine. Go ahead and deal that damage. And now again, if they decide they want an introduction to annihilation or blood on the snow, they still have to make a pretty key decision here. Looks like they are gonna blood on the snow. They do have the Lolth to bring back now, which is bad. Um, really, really bad, but we'll see how this ends up going. Wish we could play this, um, but we can't. That's fine. So we can Guardian of Faith, which would crew the Bank Buster. Um, which I think is probably just the right play. We're going to submit zero. Uh, we'll go ahead and crew this up with this. Alright. Um, I guess we can do this too. I think we might as well, right? Alright, so we can attack them, which is quite a bit. They block two things, only take two damage, I suppose. Um, alternatively, we just go all out all and get rid of it. Um, I, I think that that's probably just the play. They kill the den of the bugbear and the tutu. And that's annoying, but Loth is dead, uh, as well as their board presence. And so I think that that's just the best play. That might have been a bit of a throwaway. We didn't really have to activate the den, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Um, or we could have used the den to crew this. But e either way, I think that was okay. Uh, would love another planeswalker at the moment. Uh, luckily, we can still crew this bank buster or just draw cards off of it. Like, that's still an option. So, we still have some, some playability here. Okay, they're going to take that. In which case, we just get to draw a free card. Uh, unfortunately, it's a plane, so it's not very exciting. But, uh, okay. Yep, we just go for this. Um, get rid of it and get the attack in. So, at the very least, we do have lethal next turn. I mean, th I'm sure they have an answer here, but I feel like this is just the best bet for us, obviously, so we're going to go for it. We may have misplayed a little here, but I still feel like we have done our uh, our due dil diligence here. And worth noting, Light Up the Night is something that, you know, if we get a Planeswalker, we just shoot him for three, <laughs> um, which is pretty good. We have two more Planeswalkers available to us in our deck, uh, so that's still a hope. Okay. So now they can Necrotic Fumes, if they'd like, to exile the Guardian. Um, or they can wait, but... Oh, okay. 
So we sack you. We have to sack that, so they get that. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a very good play, and that's the worst worst case scenario draw. There is no doubt about that, so we just have to pass. Man, that's rough. Uh, that Amiria's call would do wonders right now. It looks like they're gonna stabilize. Uh, that's so annoying. I hate when you just draw a land and you need literally anything but a land. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we play it. Um, hits him for one. <laughs> we could have waited and tried to kill the Loth with it, but I, I think at this point we just have to kind of do the thing. And I'm holding, I'm sandbagging the land here. Uh, not, we don't really need more mana, so I'm not really worried about the mana situation. I kind of want to, one, make them think we might have something, but two, if we draw anything that uh, allows us some kind of, I don't know, I don't know what we could get here, but we need something. So I'm, I'm sandbagging just in case. Uh, yep. There it is. That's good. So we actually could have killed that, but that's okay. They're going to hit for five. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Don't do this to me. Ugh. I hate when this happens. This is so annoying. Oh, man. Look, you know, it happens. You can't feel too bad because you, the reality is this happens to everybody from time to time. But I understand. It's very frustrating. Unfortunately, it is what it is. We just have to kind of deal with it. But chances are we're just dead here because we just are only drawing lands. They're going to gain some life off of this. A light up the, a light up the night would potentially finish them off. But uh, we might just be dead here. Yep. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep. Good game. I'm going to go ahead and concede, guys. Let's jump into a game three. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys. Here we are. This is going to be our last game. Uh, we get a land and we are golden. So I think we go ahead and keep this one. Uh, this is also a nice little turn one play because it'll shot. It'll you know, ping him for one, but then we get that Luminarch Aspirant with an extra counter on it, uh, which is certainly useful. We do get another land. We're guaranteed the fourth as well, so we've got some plays here. Uh, I, I think this is a strong opener. All right. Again, would love a third land. A third land would do wonders for us here, but at the very least, we will get some creatures out this upcoming turn, which is helpful. Um, okay. Okay. Well, last time we needed the land, uh, or we didn't need the land, now we do, and here we are. Uh, all right, we're just gonna attack him for six. We do have an aggressive start at the very least, so that's nice, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Lands, man, they are not my friend today. Not my friend today. Here's that Brushfire Elemental, fully expected that to come down. They're gonna get a, uh, a good bit of damage, yeah. Guys, it's not gonna happen. Uh, let's attack in. I mean, we got him down to seven, so we are threatening a good bit of damage next turn. Um, maybe we win. If we win, we're done. <laughs> I'm not going again. These lands are cursed today. Uh, all right. Ooh, that actually solves their problems. So that gets them out of lethal range. That was very, very good on their end. Um, yeah, that gets him out of lethal range. We could deal eight next turn, guaranteed. Uh, probably not going to deal more than eight. Um, unless we draw another one of these. <laughs> but yeah, here it's not going to matter anyway. All right. Cool. Wow, we did draw another one of those. That's hilarious. Um, I mean, we ping him. We're going to go here. And we're going to attack. I'm doing it. Um... I don't think they can deal 10 to us. I just don't. If they can, that really sucks. Um, but I'm banking on they can't. So we're going to call the bluff. <laughs> They've got three cards left in hand. Uh, they played like extra lands last turn. So chances are they may not have lands, uh, which is actually good for us because then that brush fire elemental can't get bigger. Um, I don't know. We'll see. 
I'm calling the bluff. I don't, I don't think they have it. Fight me. <laughs> okay, they are being very careful in the way they tap their lands here. That's interesting. Uh, so I assume they're gonna do this and create the this as a land, as a uh, creature. Okay. A land still doesn't solve their problem. No, it does solve their problem. Crap. Why did I do this? I was hoping they didn't have a land. Oh, please just say yes, attack. Please mess up. They can attack, right? This has haste. Why didn't they attack? I'm so confused. I'm flabbergasted. Uh, all right. Well, we still suck and can't draw a land. So we're still pretty dead. Um, but I am... I am so confused why they didn't attack. They could have killed us. They had lethal. We had one mana available. Why wouldn't they have just killed us? Duh. Um. So like we have to block this guy. Um, and I think we try and kill the brush fire. I'm just so confused at this point. Oh. Well, that's really good. Um, so we're dead? Are we dead? We're pretty close. We're not quite dead, but we're basically dead. All right. Oh, look, there's that third land. It's really annoying. Um, all right. So we literally, like, can't do anything, right? We can play a creature. Uh, which can block, uh, but... Ah. That's so annoying. <laughs> That's really, really annoying. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> Come on. Somehow we can win this. <laughs> Somehow. Nope. All right, we're dead. <laughs> yep, good game. Um, mm. Let's talk about this. All right, so Lands decided to be a douche today, uh, and that's why we lost. Um, no, I mean, look, this this is a really good deck. I think the Lands issue was the issue, at least in that last game. I think in the second game, we, I mean, we got a couple land drops in a row, which was just unfortunate, but it wasn't like we were overly flooded. It was more like we just had a couple bad draws. That last game, if we had gotten some Lands, <laughs> just some, we would have been really, really, I think, uh, set up to win because we had the Zareal in hand. We had other things we could play, uh, but we just didn't get there, and it's unfortunate, but you can't do anything about it, guys. Uh, regardless, I really like this deck. Again, guys, go check out um, the uh, the creator of this list, Symphonier's Gaming. Absolutely phenomenal deck builder and really, really strong player as well. Uh, and just, it seems at least, just starting out on YouTube. So I want to encourage you guys to go hang out with him. This was great. I really like this deck. I'm, ex I'm excited to see what other decks he's created and maybe try them out again here on the channel. Uh, but regardless, this was a blast. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great start to your week and we will see you again very soon for some more gameplay videos.